looking for a great, easy, couldn't be easier meatloaf recipe? Yes, you say? Well, I have the recipe for you. It's really straightforward and delicious. You're gonna love it, and it only takes a couple minutes to put together. Start off with your bread. You need three slices of sandwich bread, ground into breadcrumbs. The bread works as a binder, and it also lightens up the meat mixture, so it serves two purposes here in your meatloaf. You probably know that if you've made meatloaf before. Once they're fine breadcrumbs, put them into a bowl and then cover them with milk. I have a third of a cup of milk. You wanna soak your breadcrumbs just for about 10 minutes. It might even take less time than that. Give them time to absorb all of your milk while you get the rest of your ingredients ready. I have one and a half pounds of ground beef and a half a pound of ground pork. I like the combination of pork. Sometimes I put veal in there. Sometimes you can buy those meatloaf mixes in the store and you can use that if you want to. Now you wanna grate your onion here because you don't want big chunks of onion in your meatloaf. Sometimes I pre-saute things and then it kind of doesn't matter if it's grated, but if you're not gonna saute it, you want it really fine. You can grate it in your food processor, and in fact, since your food processor is already going to be dirty from making your breadcrumbs, I think it's a great idea. Also probably a little bit less painful than grating it by hand. Grated onion, and then just transfer your onion to the bowl with the meat. Two cloves of garlic minced. If you were doing this in the food processor, like I said, you could grind up your onions in the food processor. You could do the garlic there too. A quarter cup of ketchup. You'll need another quarter cup for basting the top as your meatloaf is baking. So you'll need a half a cup total. One large egg. Sort of whisk it on the side of the bowl. That's what I like to do. And then you need a teaspoon and a half of salt, which I'm gonna guesstimate, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Breadcrumbs, don't forget those. You wanna put those soaked breadcrumbs in and then mix. Conventional wisdom has you always mixing this by hand, so I guess I'm gonna do it. I always try to avoid it because, well, I don't know. Mostly I try to avoid it when I'm doing it on camera because then I have to go wash my hands. <laughs> but it is the best way to get it incorporated. You wanna make sure that you mix it properly and fully, but not over mix it. Because when you over mix it, then your meatloaf will get tough. It's not nice to eat really tough meatloaf but you want it fully combined, and your hands really are the best tool for that. My baking sheet is lined with aluminum foil for easier cleanup. Transfer it to the baking sheet, and just freeform, make it into basically a football shape. You want it about nine inches long, and say like four and a half to five inches wide. You can also bake this in a loaf pan if you want to, but this is also a really great way to do it. Pop this into the oven. It's at 400 degrees until it's 160 in the center, about 45 to 55 minutes. And during that cooking time, you're gonna baste it twice with a quarter cup more ketchup, just for a nice crust. Dinner served. So it releases a little bit of fat and all that, but that's what happens when you cook meat. So you can transfer it to something else. Carefully lift it off. You might wanna let it rest just a little bit before you do this because it can be kind of delicate if you don't, but it'll be really nice and warm. Ketchup makes a great glaze. I think you should make two of these because I think you're gonna wanna make sandwiches tomorrow. And if you don't make two, there's not gonna be any left because it's so good. And it's really easy to put together, guys. You should really try this. It's a very simple, straightforward, and fantastic recipe. Give it a try.